good afternoon, morning or evening, depending on where you are on this lovely planet. Hey, it's George from Gaming My Whole Life. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's question, are gamers a bit too nostalgic? Or to be more specific, because I wrote down the name and I forgot it already, here we are, are gamers blinded? by nostalgia. I think this will make for a very interesting conversation. It's great for those of you who enjoy a deeper ended conversation, who like a bit more originality, a bit more creativity as far as YouTube uploads go. And if you appreciate a YouTuber like that, who will go the extra mile of occasionally going out of his way, damn the views, be it whether it's a lot or a little, I'm going to try to be as entertaining as possible. You appreciate someone who doesn't follow trends subscribe i'd really appreciate that and uh do hit like at some point when you remember to do so maybe now so let's clarify what i mean by nostalgia so then we're on the same page then i want to admit that i'm greatly affected by this and talk about the broader impact so in my hand right here as far as i am personally concerned is gold this is gold to me this is the original Sonic the Hedgehog game that came out on the Sega Mega Drive, which is the Sega Genesis for my American viewers. This is the original deal. When I open it up, ignore the Battletoads book that I have in there for some reason. It's here, right? Simply looking at this, literally, not fake hype or whatever, or fake excitement, literally takes me to a different existence, makes me happy. I am completely biased towards that game. I am biased due to my nostalgia to this, which is the Resident Evil 2 in mint condition for the PlayStation 1. This game is arguably by many considered to be the best survival horror game that ever came out. For many people, this was their first survival horror game. This was my first survival horror game. This was the first game that I played at my friend's house where he showed it to me. And before he did, he let me know that he had been having nightmares because of a game. And being, you know, a mature teenage boy that I was, I think I was like 12 or something when I played it, um, I made fun of him. <laughs> Not that I was a bully back then or anything, but you know, if you're a guy, you know how it is. You make fun of each other. And um, yeah, he told me this game was making him have nightmares. I laughed at him because by then I considered myself a gaming expert. I had played through the entire generation of the original Nintendo. I had, I had played through the entire generation of the Super Nintendo and the Sega. I considered myself a master to console generations in the ignorance of youth. But anyway, <laughs> I'd played two whole console generations. And so the mere idea that a video game could give you nightmares, could scare you, I thought, man, my boy's a pansy, what, what is going on? I borrowed the game, it scared the life out of me, I had so many nightmares, I loved it, right? So extremely biased, and of course, you know, if I have a look at this, which is Mario 64 on the Nintendo 64 cartridge, again, extremely biased, and I have countless other examples, but that's what I'm going to show. Now... Nostalgia, as far as I'm concerned, is bias. It has to be bias. You have memories attached to it. You have favorable memories, right? And our mind, our brains are really smart. We do a great job of blocking out everything bad that happened at any given time and trying to remember all the good time memories. So, you know, I look at this and I feel happy. I think about the colorful colors. I think about the graphics. I think about how I felt playing it. I think about the age I was at that time. I don't think about the fact that I was heavily bullied in high school or the fact that I was in a fight literally every other week. I literally fought my way through high school for the most part, right? And that's not something I often talk about on this channel because our memory is very selective and so forth, right? We look at the good things. We remember the good things, you know? While playing uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, I didn't need to think about the fact that, you know, things were hard at home and I had personal problems going on there. It didn't matter. I pick up that Sonic the Hedgehog case. I pick up that Resident Evil 2 case. I pick up my Mario Kart 64 cartridge and all I remember is the good things. So there is a bias there. It is a positive, selective, filtered bias. What I want to question and answer, and you know, we can do this together as fellow gamers, is whether or not, frankly, to be brutally honest, if our opinions and judgments can even be trusted when we're covering sequels to games and situations where there is an obvious bias because of our um, you know, childhood experiences and so forth. Maybe I'm reviewing a future game which didn't deserve a 10 out of 10. 
But because I have some selective positive memories with the game that came out prior, like freaking 10, 20 years ago or whatever, I give the modern version a higher review grade than maybe it deserves. And frankly, I think all of us are guilty of this firstly. I think anyone saying that they do not suffer from nostalgia in the slightest is being disingenuous and is frankly being dishonest to either their audience, if they're a YouTuber such as myself or any other online personality, or they're lying to themselves and haven't self-reflected enough. How could you not be biased? And bias sounds bad, but the way I see bias is babe bias is just favoritism how could you not be a little bit more um you know kind towards something that you like it's like the it's like you're on a you're playing a sport and you have a stranger to the left and you have your best friend girl or uh woman or man boy girl to the right right you're gonna and you have to pick who the next person is, is gonna play on your team you're gonna pick your homeboy or girl aren't you of course you are so it does exist but is it a problem? I have seen whispers over the internet over the years, this is something that has been discussed many times, as to whether or not people like me, and don't worry if you're young, one of my younger viewers, uh, there's a small handful of you, so hello, <laughs> but if you're one of my younger viewers, and let's say you literally haven't been alive long enough, or you haven't been gaming long enough, that nostalgia really has much of an impact on you, mark my words, 10 years from now, you will get it. You will get it. And I'm not acting smart. I'm, I'm not putting you down. It's just, it's literally the like transition of life as far as gamers and all that go, right? Of course, you're going to look back in 10 years time and think about all the wonderful video game experiences that you had during this time. You're going to block out all the microtransactions, BS. You're going to block out the, the broken launches and this and that. All you're going to remember is the first time I know you played Ghost of Tsushima, Spider-Man, Xenoblade, I'm just looking at my wall. You're going to be very selective, you're going to be very nostalgic, um, Dark Souls games and all that, right? In 10 years time, let's say those games disappear and then they come back 10 years later, you're going to be so nostalgic, you're going to be so happy and excited. So, to answer my own question, heck yeah, I think we're blinded by nostalgia. I don't think that means we can't make accurate judgments and so forth. It means we're going to be a little bit more positive towards something. I truly believe that if nostalgia is part of it, a game that we would normally give a 6 out of 10 to, I reckon at the very least we would bump it up to a 7. That doesn't mean it's inaccurate though, because sometimes, often actually, I think fans should come first. I think when developers make games, they should one, appease and appeal those who made them successful in the first place. So for example, Street Fighter 6 is coming out soon. As far as I'm concerned, it's Capcom's job to look after the old Street Fighter fans first and then the new guys, right? Now, I think nostalgia is actually a very good thing and I think uh, developers and publishers are actually very well aware of it. Firstly, when a brand new game comes out that's based off an old IP, right? When a new Resident Evil game comes out, when a new Street Fighter game comes out, when a new Mario game comes out, when a new any game comes out that has a previous history. Firstly, it is your greatest, strongest nostalgic fans that are hyping you, that are doing the pre-orders, that are doing all of that, right? Also, one good way to think about fans who stubbornly hold on to nostalgia, because frankly, as I said, if you're old enough, you do have nostalgia. There's no way you don't. And if you're young enough, cool. You're going to have nostalgia later on, so you will get it, right? But I think one of the good things about nostalgia is I think it helps fans keep developers and publishers honest. So we all know that publishers these days will sadly try to get away with as much as they can. If they can give us a half-baked product, if they can give us a product where half of the features are missing, then they will do that, you know. Basically, the best metaphor I've seen is once upon a time you were able to buy a pie, <laughs> you'd get the pie, you couldn't update the pie, you couldn't change the pie, so the pie had to be as complete as possible on launch, right? That way games launched in a better state because there was no such thing as the will patch it later attitude and so forth. What also was a case back in the day which will help keep developers humble, which is why it's important to be stubborn, to be frank for a lack of a better word and all that, is you need a complete game and you need the game to not launch with separate editions, different multiple versions, and content hold back because you have to understand back in the day when additional content was made 
That was known as DLC, but that was really known as an expansion pack. So you'd buy a game, you'd enjoy it, then developers would release an expansion pack and then we would buy it, it would be all good. But then they sold it, but nowadays, what will happen is you will get the pie that you bought once upon a time with literal holes in the pie on day one and those missing pieces of the pie in a advanced edition, in a complete edition, in a day one edition, in an ultimate edition, right? Which costs more money. So that's not good. If you have nostalgia, if you remember how things were, if you understand the proper value of games and know that the industry can and has thrived without having to do all these dodgy practices and so forth, nostalgia helps. Because when I think of Mario Kart and then I go buy the next one, I remember and I expect the full darn product. Um, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is coming out next week from Nintendo and guess what? Again, this is why I keep giving credit, credit where due to Nintendo. You can buy Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, right? For the one-off price. There is no multiple versions. There isn't Zelda Tears of the Kingdom base game. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom ultimate game. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, all the stuff we've held back and now you can actually get it. That doesn't exist. You get the full darn game at launch. Nostalgia is very important. Because one, games are made for you. You are the most loyal. See, when publishers release games, they don't know if the new guys are going to give a shit, to be frank, right? Not hating on newer, younger gamers. I've never been like that, right? But they are a gamble. They are an unproven variable, which publishers don't know how it's going to go. Ubisoft could, sorry, Ubisoft, Capcom could go ahead and release Dino Crisis, right? A brand new remake of Dino Crisis. I personally really want that. It was an old school survival horror game, but think uh, dinosaurs instead of zombies. Very fun. Anyway, say they were going to go ahead and make a remake in order. They would be banking on the fact that there is a lot of old school nostalgic fans who loved Dino Crisis 1, Dino Crisis 2, and has been waiting forever for this game. They know at the very least they can rely on a certain amount of copies sold no matter what. Everyone else is an unproven variable. I'm not saying they won't jump on board. I'm not even saying those unproven variables. Um, I'm not even saying they don't outnumber us. I bet you they do. A lot of people grow up. A lot of people stop gaming. A lot of people come across other responsibilities. And a lot of people fall out of the hobbies of video games just because, hey, maybe you have children or something. Last I heard, I don't have any, but they take up a lot of your time and money. No judgment. It's just like a you know fact of life sort of thing. So nostalgia keeps publishers humble, keeps developers grateful. Because if you have nostalgia, you remember the old values, you remember how things were, you have set expectations, and then you react accordingly if expectations fall below it. I think nostalgia is actually a beautiful thing. It's something that takes you back to your childhood, to your selective childhood, where all the good memories are, where you forget all the old memories, and what the game did for you at any given time. See, I have the ability, I'm bad with years. So if you're like, all right, what year did this happen? No idea. But if you show me like Nintendo 64 cartridge, it's like, right, what were you doing in your life everywhere when this game was out? I will be able to answer that question. <laughs> if you want to know how I thought before I was even 10 years old, when I was super, super young, just show me this, my mind goes back there, right? So I see nostalgia as a very good, healthy thing, which is very big in the gaming industry, especially since um, either through emulation or through developers re-releasing their games, we get to re-experience our childhood memories. That's why remakes are so good. Because when a remake comes out, it bases it with the modern graphics and so forth. Yes, the remake always looks a lot better visually. But what it really does is simply makes you feel the way you felt at the time. So I'll use the Resident Evil 4 remake, right? I haven't got my hands on it just because my backlog is, is, is too big. I would definitely get it. And I still, need, I still need to play the Callista Protocol. I have it, you know, waiting on the PS5 for me. I just need to have time to play it. What was I saying? Whatever. I need a coffee. I've clocked off. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, depending where you live on this big blue planet of ours. God bless you all. Take care. Oh, and by the way, I really should have included this at the start of the video. I'll probably edit this 
to the front of the video so it doesn't look awkward. Thank you so much for those of you who decided to check out my first game in my whole life podcast. The video ended up going for like 40 something minutes. It ended up going much longer than I thought. We talked about the PlayStation VR 2 and how fans love it. And of course, the hype and excitement around Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Thank you so much for watching that first uh, podcast episode. YouTube is apparently going to support it going forward. So I thought I'll try it out. And um, I think there'll be another episode coming soon.